Today we're going to be talking about how to find the acute angle between two lines, and in this particular problem we've been given equations of two lines, 2x minus y equals 3 is one of them, 3x plus y equals 7 is the other. What we want to do is find the acute angle between these two lines. So before we go ahead and get started, let's just talk about visually what we're looking at here. If we convert this equation, 2x minus y equals 3, to slope intercept form, what we can do is add y to both sides, subtract 3 from both sides, and we see that we get y equals 2x minus 3. If we do the same thing to this equation, if we subtract 3x from both sides, we'll get y equals negative 3x plus 7. If we graph these two lines on an xy coordinate plane in an xy coordinate system like this, we draw our axes, we'll say that this is x and this is y, Let's graph our first line, y equals 2x minus 3. Well, for that line, we're going to have a y-intercept here of negative 3. Let's call this point here 0, negative 3, the y-intercept of negative 3. And then our slope is positive 2, so we're going to get up 2 and over to the right 1, up 2 and over to the right 1, something like this. So we can draw our line like so. That's our first line. Now our second line, y equals negative 3x plus 7, we're going to have a y-intercept of positive 7. So let's call this point here, maybe right about here, 0, positive 7, like that. And then our slope is negative 3, so that means we're going to go down 3 and then over to the right 1, about like this, down 3 and over 1, something like this. So if we draw a line like so, then this is our second line. And the only reason I'm drawing this is to show you that we're looking for the acute angle between the lines. Remember that an acute angle, you'll remember this from geometry or maybe trigonometry, that the acute angle is the angle which is less than 90 degrees. And even just drawing a rough picture, we can see that that angle is going to be this one right here or this one right here. This is an angle which is less than 90 degrees. The other angle, which is going to be the obtuse angle, is this angle here, this wider angle, an angle that's larger than 90 degrees. So we know already we're looking for this angle right here and we can get a visual picture of it. Now, how are we actually going to find that angle? Well, we're going to use an application of vectors. As a reminder, we have this corollary formula for cosine of theta. This is the formula we're going to be using. In the numerator of this formula, I have the dot product of a and b, and in the denominator, I have the magnitude of a and the magnitude of b, which is really just the length of our vectors a and b, which we're going to find using the distance formula. So what do we need? Well, we need a vector representation of each of these lines. And really all we need to do, they're both set up in a form that we can use here. We just need the coefficients on our x and y variables. So the coefficient here on our x term is positive 2. The coefficient on our y term when we include the sign in front of it is negative 1. Over here in this other equation, we have a coefficient of 3 on our x term and a coefficient of positive 1 on our y term. So what this becomes here, if we write this in vector form, we have the vector here 2 comma negative 1 like this. If we write this one in vector form, we have the vector 3 comma positive 1. These are going to be the vector components that we're going to use to find the dot product of a and b and then the magnitude of a and b. So let's go ahead and start applying this formula here. We're going to have cosine of theta is equal to the dot product of a and b. Remember that the dot product, all we're doing is multiplying the components of each vector and then taking the sum of the product of each component. So what that means is we're multiplying the x components together. The x components in these two vectors are 2 and 3, so we're multiplying 2 and 3 together. Then we add to that the product of our y components. So we're going to say plus, and then we multiply our y components together, negative 1 times positive 1. That's going to be the dot product of a and b when we say this is the vector a and this is the vector b. There's our dot product. Now in our denominator, 
we're going to be using the distance formula to find the magnitude of A and B, or really you can just think about it as the length of A and B. Well, in that case, remember that our distance formula, remember that we'll call this the vector A, so we'll say that distance D sub A is going to be equal to, our distance formula tells us that if we want to find a length or a distance between two points, all we do is use this distance formula, which is the distance between two points. Well, this vector, vector A, 2, negative 1, this is really just saying that the vector starts at the origin, the point 0, 0, and goes out to the point 2, negative 1. So just by having this vector, 2, negative 1, we know we have these two points along the vector. So our distance formula says that we can take 2 minus 0, so we say 2 minus 0, and square it. Then we add to that negative 1 minus 0, negative 1 minus 0, and square that, and we're just taking the square root. That'll give us the length of our vector A because it gives us the distance between the initial point 0, 0 and the terminal point 2, negative 1. So here we get the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, and then we have negative 1 minus 0 is negative 1, squared is positive 1, so we get plus 1. So our length, or our distance, is square square root of 5. That's the length of the vector a. We can do the same thing for b, and really all we're going to get here, notice that the initial point of a vector like this is always going to be 0, 0, so we don't even have to say minus 0 here. All we really need is to say 3 squared plus 1 squared, take our two components, and we get 9 plus 1, which is going to be square root of 10. So when we find these two, we can say this is the magnitude of A, this is the magnitude of B, and we can just plug those in here, root 5 times root 10, like this. Now we've got all of the pieces plugged into our formula, we just need to simplify. So we're going to get cosine of theta is equal to, in the numerator, 6 plus a negative 1, which is going to give us a positive 5. And then in our denominator, if you remember from algebra, when you have two terms that are raised to the same exponent, we have 5 to the 1 half and 10 to the 1 half power. We can combine them, multiply the bases, and say 50 to the 1 half, or just square root 50 like so. We can do this all on our calculator, but essentially what we want to do is solve for theta. The way that we're going to do that is by taking the inverse cosine function, cosine to the negative 1, or arc cosine of both sides to get theta on its own on the left hand side. So we'll get theta is going to be equal to arc cosine or cosine to the negative 1 of 5 over root 50. And if we calculate this on our calculator, that'll give us the answer. Now it's really important in a problem like this that you have your calculator in degree mode. Normally your calculator should be in radian mode, but in this particular case because you're looking for the angle and you want an answer in degrees, you want to have your calculator in degree mode. If you set your calculator to degree mode and you take the inverse cosine function of 5 over root 50, you'll find that theta is equal to 45 degrees. Just as a double check, we want to make sure that the answer we get is less than 90 degrees because remember we're looking for the acute angle. If you ever get an answer that's greater than 90 degrees, what you can do, let's say we were to get an answer of 100 degrees, you can take 180 degrees minus 100 and get an answer of 80 degrees, that's going to be the acute angle. If you find 100, it just means probably, unless you did something wrong, that you found the obtuse angle here, the larger angle. So to find the acute angle, you want to just take 180, subtract this value that you found, and you'll get the acute angle 80 degrees. But in this particular case, 45 is less than 90, so this is going to be our acute angle between these two lines.